Now, this story is called Nobelesta Nobles A Space Rock, and it's in my book Mermaids Are Cool. Nobelesta Mermaid was looking through her telescope just as she always did every night to check on the stars and make sure they were all in their proper places. Suddenly she noticed a bright, bright gleam in a corner of the sky that she often looked at. Nobelesta knew that she had never seen that bright gleam just there at that spot in the sky before. It was something new. She cleaned the glass at the end of her telescope. She thought that perhaps a speck of dust had clung to her telescope and maybe that was what she was seeing. But no, the bright gleam was still there when she looked through her telescope again. There really was something new in the night sky and Nobelesta knew that she needed to track it carefully and find out what it was. So she reached for her mermaid magic seaweed sack and she pulled out her shell slate and a solid seaweed pencil and she began to do all the calculations she needed to do to work out where the new bright gleam was coming from, how fast it was travelling and would it hit the ocean. Now Nobelesta was truly a noble mermaid and she did not want to worry the other mermaids so she kept her discovery to herself. I must find out what this object is, where it is travelling from and to and if it will land in the ocean, she thought. And if it is going to land in the ocean, then I must make sure that I take the right action to protect everyone. See, she really is a very noble mermaid, isn't she? So Noble Esther spent a night and an hour doing her calculations, and she was unhappy to learn that the bright gleam that she could see was, as she had suspected, a piece of space dust. And also, as she had suspected, it was heading straight for the ocean. Now Noble Esther realised that this was not just a tiny speck of space dust, because for her to be able to see it through her telescope, it must be a sizable chunk of space dust. In fact, it was a space rock. And Nobelesta knew that she would have to come up with a plan to save the ocean and all the ocean creatures so that the space rock would not hit with such a force that it would harm them. There were several things to think about, thought Nobelesta. She must keep tracking the space rock so she could calculate exactly where it would land in the ocean. She must build a mound of sand, she had decided, to absorb the force of the space rock once it hit. And then she must call in Wave and Esther to calculate how the waves would be affected once the space rock hit. Noble Esther knew that Wave and Esther would work out what she could do to stop the waves from wobbling wildly after the space rock hit. Wave and Esther, Noble Esther knew, would have a plan to keep the waves calm enough so that they would not wash every sea creature up onto the land. Noble Esther reached into her mermaid magic seaweed sack and pulled out her special secret shell. She blew a shrill sound that she knew Wave and Esther would know was coming from her. Sure enough, after a minute and a second, Wave and Esther appeared, flashing her crimsony tail. You called, O oh wise one? asked Wave and Esther, marvelling at Noble Esther and her telescope poised looking at the sparkly stars. Thank you for coming, Wave and Esther. We have much work to do. We must save the ocean and all the sea creatures, and we don't have much time. Whatever you need me for, I'm here ready, said Wavenesta, but what is wrong? So Nobelesta told Wavenesta about the space rock that was heading for the ocean. She told her of her plan to build the big mound of sand so the space rock would land right in the middle of the sand. And then she asked Wavenesta to think of a plan to keep the waves from wobbling wildly after the space rock had landed. Give me a minute and a second to think about it, said Wavenesta. So while Wavenesta was thinking, Nobelesta blew a loud note on her special secret shell. After a minute and a second, the water all around Nobelesta and Wavenesta was filled with whales, whales of all sorts and all sizes. What do you need us to do? asked Wonderful White Whale. I need you all to scoop up as much sand as you can and pile it up until we have a huge mound of sand in just this spot here, she said, pointing to a spot just near where the whales were waiting. All the whales went to work willingly. Wavenesta reached down into her mermaid magic seaweed sack and pulled out her special secret shell. She blew a loud blast on it, and in a minute and a second, she was surrounded by all the manta rays in the ocean as they had heard her call. What do you need us to do? asked Maximilia, the main manta ray. Quick as you can, I need all you manta rays to scoop up as much seaweed as you can and spread it across all the waves like a woven blanket, said Wavenesta. The seaweed will keep the waves calm and stop them from wobbling wildly. In a minute and a second, all the manta rays had disappeared down into the depths to pluck the seaweed and spread it through the waves. Meantime, Noble Esther was continuing her counting and watching the space rock speed through her telescope. Just as the whales finished building the mound of sand and just as the manta rays finished spreading the seaweed through the waves, the space rock hit the mound of sand. 
It was going so fast, it disappeared down, down, down through the sand with a dull thud, and then there was complete silence. It must be buried deep inside the earth, way down deep under the ocean, said Novalesta. Just then, Novalesta and Wavenesta and the whales and the manta rays heard a muffled roar, followed by the waves starting to wash about as if they would wobble wildly. But as each wave felt the tug of the seaweed, it settled down and was wobbling wildly no more. All was calm. Hooray, said Wavenesta. It worked. So it did, said Novalesta. So that was how Novalesta mermaid nobbled the space rock with the help of Wavenesta as well. You know, Hawaii is a microcosm of the world with people here from all over the world. And Noa Noa Hawaii is a microcosm of the traditional arts of the world with beautiful patterns from many countries. They've been in business for 38 years with wonderful Hawaii design batik clothing. Their hand dyed and handmade clothes have patterns that are based on traditional kapa and tapa designs from Hawaii, Polynesia, Micronesia, Indonesia, even New Zealand and Africa. So check out all of the wonderful um, items that Noa Noa has on their website, which is www.noanoahawaii.com. So I'll be back next week, so bye for now.